welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technologies video training. Today we're going to talk about Profibus communications and more specifically we're going to talk about the ProSoft Technology MVI56 PDPM V1 communications module. The MVI56 Profibus DP V1 master communication module is a powerful communication module interface for the Control Logics processors. Developed under license from Rockwell Automation, the module incorporates proprietary backplane technology that enables powerful data exchange with control logics processors. So now that we know what the MVI56 PDPM V1 module is, now I'll give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. So what are we going to show today? Well, today I'm going to talk about a control logics chassis or the ProSoft Technology MVI56 PDPM V1 Profibus DP Master Communications Module. On the Profibus network, will communicate to an S7 200 CPU with an added EM277 Profibus adapter and a Phoenix Contact ILPBBK. That's their Profibus DP bus terminal. Now we're going to go through the setup of adding the MVI56 PDP MV1 to your Control Logics rack, configuring your processor, importing the ladder, and going online, downloading, doing all that good stuff. So the first thing you'll want to do is open a new project or an existing project. Right now I'm going to click on new to create a new project. So once the new controller window opens, I'm going to go ahead and define my revision. I'm using 16. Now we'll give it a new project or new controller name. So now we'll click OK. And it takes us back to our main logics window. So I'll open up the main program, go into the main routine. And actually, you know what, I don't want to do this just yet. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and right click on the I.O. configuration. And we will choose new module, choose other generic 1756 module. Now we'll go ahead and give it a module name. Now we'll define our COM format. Be sure to choose data int, that's key. And now the assembly instance input 1, output 2, configuration 4, and our assembly instance sizes. 250 input, 248 output, and 0 for configuration. Everything looks good in the connection tab. Default 5, RP, 5 millisecond RPI is good. So, now we're back into our main window. So now I can go ahead and import my ladder. So I'll right click on an empty rung, and I will choose to import rung and now you'd want to browse to wherever you have your wherever you downloaded the add-on instruction from it should also be on your CD-ROM so right now I'm going to choose the legacy rung I'll double click it and if, you, if you're not using slot 1 here's where you'd want to go ahead and modify the slot number that you are using I'm using slot 1 so I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose OK for this now we're all good I'm going to delete this uh, rung here All right, now we're all good. Project verifies. Now I'm going to go ahead and download my program. Oh, got to find out who I am, where I am first. And I am at 4.170 backplane right there. So I'll download my project. And hopefully everything's working. So now we're downloaded. Let me go ahead and place the processor and run. Oops, can't place it in run. Can't place it in run because my key switch is in program. Let me go ahead and get up and change my key switch. Okay, so the key switch is in remote run. Now I should be able to place the processor in run remotely. There we go. So now we're in run. Now everything's good. Okay, so the module's configured in the rack. So now what we'll do is we will bust open the ProSoft Configuration Builder and walk you through setting up the Profibus side of things. Once we finish with PCB and the Profibus network setup, we'll jump back into RS Logics to verify data integrity. So now that we've finished with the initial Control Logic setup, let's go ahead and open ProSoft Configuration Builder. All right, so once PCB opens, Here's the main screen that you're going to see. And let me just briefly touch on a few items within PCB. 
up top we have a standard menu bar with uh, file view project tools files just that same file you might see in other applications views a little bit different you can view the icons in small or large project depending on where you are within PCB a lot of these items will be grayed out a good place to start is the help for PCB and under tools there's a couple options and then help you can do the standard about and contents for the help so for now let me go ahead and right click on default module and I'm going to choose module now you have a choose module type depending on the the bullet filter we select we can choose all which lists all the modules without any filters we can choose our PLX 4000 series which is our ProLink 4000 and our 5000 series our ProLink 6000 series which is our wireless ProLink gateways our PTQ series for the quantum and unity processors and our MVI 46 series which is for slick processors and our MVI 69 for control logics, MVI 71 for PLC and 94 94 for the flex IO so I'm gonna go ahead and choose 56 for the MVI 56 PDP MV1 click OK now we see the configuration notice these red X's here well these red X's simply mean that we haven't configured things yet that's what we're gonna do so hopefully when we're done we'll get rid of the red X's so I'll go ahead and expand the MVI 56 PDP MV1. You can open the comment field for module comment. And here we can add a module comment. All right, so there's our comment. Go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to expand the MVI PDP MV1 and click on it. And you'll notice once we click on it, double click on it rather, it'll bring up another window and here's where we can actually change the parameters within the the different settings So we have our input data size that's the amount of data coming into the module output is the amount of data going out we can swap the input bytes and output bytes and we have an option for legacy mode go ahead and read the text description on what the legacy mode actually is I will tell you that for the majority of the applications legacy mode will be set to yes so for, again for the majority of applications leaving legacy mode to yes will work just fine go ahead and read the text description on what the legacy mode actually is and reference the user manual as well I will tell you that the legacy mode uses a fixed IO size so previously in the RS logic setup where we define the assembly instance we specified an input size of 250 and an output size of 248 well legacy mode uses just that whereas if you set legacy mode to no then the module uses what's called a flex IO mode so that allows you to specify different assembly instance sizes for your input and output images this is really useful if the modules in a remote rack so if it's in a remote rack over control net then chances are you might want to use the flex mode to help streamline your remote network communications I'll give you an example let's say on the Profibus network you're only communicating to one controller IO device drive doesn't really matter but say you're only passing 12 words of data in and out so you got 12 words of input data and 12 words of output data well if you're using legacy mode then on the remote network or control net network you're still going to be passing 250 input words and 248 output words whereas if you put it in flex mode you can streamline that to only pass the data that you actually require Notice now, while in flex mode, the MVI 56 PDP MV1 is passing 12 words of data in and 12 words of data out on the Profibus network. Well, now it's also passing 12 words of data on the Control Net network. So that's about it on flex and I/O mode. Let's go ahead and click OK here. Notice I didn't change any settings in there. Normally the defaults, well, I don't know about normally, but for this application, the defaults work just fine. All right, here we have our Profibus Master setup. I'm not going to go into too much detail here just yet. What I am going to do is click on the Configure Profibus to allow us to design our Profibus network. And the very first thing we're going to want to do is we see that we have our master defined already. 
So now what we'll do is we'll add some GSD files. So I will go to my install GSD and I'll browse to the different locations where I have my GSD files. For this one, for the Profibus Phoenix Contact PB PLBK, I'm going to choose this GSD file. Now it's asking if I have any pictures. I'm going to choose the bitmap. Now I need to add another GSD file. And now I'm going to choose the one for the Siemens S7 200 CPU. Actually, it's the EM277. And I'll choose the bitmap for that as well. All right. So now we have our added GSD files. So now we can go ahead and drag the different devices over to the network configuration. Okay, so now that that node is there, I'm going to go ahead and double click and change the Profibus address. I'm going to use 13 for this one. And click OK. Now we're back to our window. Now with the Profibus bus terminal, each one of those little colored spots you see there on the ILPB, those are all I.O. modules. So now I need to add the different I.O. modules that are on that bus terminal. So I know what my first one is. It's an 8-channel input module. So I'm going to go ahead and drag down to where I find the IBIL. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. And my next one is the 2-channel analog input module. So I will drag that one. And then my next one is a four-channel digital output module. So I'll go ahead and slide up a bit. And there it is right there. So I'll go ahead and drag that. All right, so that one's good. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and minimize this. And then I will drag over my EM277. Uh, I'm going to slide this bar down just a little bit. And we'll double click on it, and I'm going to change its node address to node number one. Whoops. Notice node number one's not there. Well, more than likely, my master is set up for node one. So I'm going to go ahead and temporarily set this to node two. I'm going to go into my master, and I'm going to change this to node zero. The master can use node zero. So I'll click OK on that. Now I will go back into my EM277, and there node one's now available. So I'll click OK on that. And now I need to add, kind of like we did for the Phoenix Contact module, now we need to add parameters for the EM277. This is a little bit different. It doesn't really have I.O. associated with it. It has more data words or data bytes or, or just raw data coming from the CPU. So it could be map tags, things like that. So I'm going to choose 32 words output and 32 words input. And for now, for this set up for this scenario this this should work just fine so I'm gonna go ahead and go into my master setup and here are different parameters different things you can change within the Profibus master um, you can assign groups you can change the Profibus baud rate the type of network you're on and the bus parameter tab normally you don't want to change anything here there are ways to ungrade that and change the the, the properties, but for now, we'll just leave those. If you have a repeater, you can click the repeater used option. So I'll click OK on that, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now we'll close the Profibus configuration. Now we're going to go into our download section. There's two ways to download to the module. You can use our SIP Connect technology and download through an ENBT module that's in your Control Logics rack, or you can download via a serial port on your PC. So if you had serial ports on your PC, they should be populated in the select port drop-down list. For this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the SIP Connect technology. Notice here that the select the port, we have our 1756 ENBT. I'm going to click on CIP path. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate the CIP path. So I know that my ENBT IP address is 10.1.4.170. So that's how I'm going to get into my module. So now I need to go ahead and change the note, the slot number that the module is in. So the MVI56 PDP MV1 is in slot 1. I will click on the construct CIP path and you'll notice that it changes.
So click OK and I'll test the connection and the connection is good. It actually tests the connection to the ENBT through the backplane to the module. So I'll click OK on that and now we're back to our main PCB window. So now I'm going to right click on MVI 56 PDP MV1. I'm going to choose download from PC to device. And you'll notice our CIP path is still there. I'm going to click on download to download the application to the module. And once the application downloads, we can click OK. And now we see our red X's are no longer there. So now that we've set up the module, both on the control logics and the PCB side, let's take a look at how the input data gets mapped into the module. We'll also take a look at some diagnostic information. Alright, so let's take a look at some status. So from the main screen of the ProSoft Configuration Builder, we can go ahead and double click on ProViewBus DP. And once we double click, our CIP path looks good. We can click on Configure ProViewBus and it'll bring open our Profibus configuration window. So I can click on online and then monitor modify. Once we're online we can see that the EM277 and the ILPB, the Phoenix module, are both green. Green means that the nodes are online and actively communicating to the master. What I'm going to do now is unplug both modules individually and as I do you'll see the color change from green to red. And the red is indicating that the module is no longer communicating with the master. So now I'm going to go ahead and unplug the EM277 and we'll see that it turns red and I'll go ahead and plug it back in and now I'll unplug the ILPB and we'll see it turn red as well. There we go. Now I'll plug it back in and it turns green. So I'll unplug the ILPB once again and then we'll go online and take a look at some of the status within the ILPB itself. So now I'll unplug the ILPB and you see it turn red. Now what we'll do is we'll double click on the ILPB and it'll open up the online slave properties and there you see the red fault status. And then we can go to the diagnostics tab and then we see our diagnostic message station not existent. Now I'll go ahead and plug it back in and we'll see the message change. There we go. Our message has changed to ILPB BK DPV1 is okay but has diagnostic. That's probably the watchdog timer which is a warning and not a fault. So I'm going to click OK here and double click on the EM277. Go to the diagnostic page of that and we see that it also has a Profibus DP OK. It does have status information. It's the watchdog. Which again is a warning and not a fault. So we'll click OK on that. Now we're back to our main window. Now we'll go ahead and open up RS Logics again. Alright, so now that RS Logics is open, we'll go ahead and click on Communication Who Active and I'm going to go ahead and go online. I'm going to select a file, select that guy, and then we'll go ahead and go online. So now we're online with the project. Now I'm going to go to controller tags and I'm going to take a look at a couple tags in here. I'll explain a few of these tags, how they work. So set up my filtering, click OK. Let me click on monitor tags and then I will expand the Expand that and I'll expand the MVI56 PDP MV1. And we'll go down and take a look at the status tag. MVI56 PDP MV1 status. So remember in PCB when we define 768 input size and 768 output size? Well, it's shown up here. But first thing we're going to want to do is we have this thing called a CRC. We have a module CRC and a Profibus CRC. Well, we also have an input CRC and an output CRC, and those should match. On some of our other Profibus products, they actually need to match. With the control logics, the MVI56 PDP MV1, it's not really necessary, but it's a good idea to have them match. So you notice that we have the CRC in Profibus and CRC out. Well, they don't match. So what we can do is we can go over here and we have what's called a sync CRC bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on that bit and once I do that it's going to copy the input CRC over to the output CRC and I'm just going to arrange this and there we go so now I'll go ahead and NREL1 in the sync CRC and you'll notice that the CRC out will now have the same values that the CRC in has and there you go okay so we synced our CRC now our CRC in matches our CRC out 
Now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit, close, minimize some of these tags, and now we're going to take a look and see how the input data from the Profilus network gets mapped into the Control Logics tag under the MVI56 PDPM V1 dot input tag. Okay, so let me go ahead and minimize this last one here, open up the input tag, and you'll notice that byte number two is a value that's changing, coming from an analog input. Byte four is coming from the S7 200 CPU, and we'll expand the output, and you'll notice that the values are all zero. That's because our ladder has not changed them yet. So let's go ahead and open up PCB again, and let's talk about how the Profibus input data gets mapped into the module and ultimately into the CPU. Okay, so now that PCB is open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go offline, and I'm going to close this and open up the memory map. And we'll take a look at the inputs. So here's our inputs. We see that the DI8 is using one byte of input data, and the analog input module is using four bytes of input data. Now I'll click on the outputs, and we see that the analog input module is also using four bytes of output data. Well, that output data is used to configure the channels of the analog input module. You can configure the ch each channel, whether it accepts voltage or current. OK, so I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to open up RS Logics. We will expand the inputs and let's take a look specifically at byte number two. Byte number two is a value that's changing from the analog input module. Now if we take a closer look, let's open up PCB one more time. So we'll open up PCB and we'll take a look at the memory map. And you'll remember we said byte number two on the input. So byte number two, if we look up here, we see that byte number two is coming from the analog input module. Now again, remember that the columns that we're looking at here, the start offset and the end offset, these values are words. So for the analog input module, the 0H1L simply means that the starting offset is word 0 high byte, ending in word 1 low byte. So that correlates to exactly what we see in logics with the PDPM V1 dot input byte 2 changing. Again, it's coming from this analog input module. Okay. So back to RS Logics. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle a few bits, a few of the inputs on the digital input module. So if we open up PCB again, we'll notice that our DI8 is using word 0 only. So it's only using one byte and it's the low byte of word 0. So since we know it's the low byte of word 0, we know that it is MVI56 PDPM V1 input 0, the very first input byte of the module. So now I'm going to go ahead and toggle a few of the inputs and you'll see that highlighted area change. So there you see it change. Now I'm going to toggle the second bit and you'll see that value change as well. There we go. Okay. So now that we know how the data maps, how the input data maps from the Profibus network into the module, into the control logic CPU, now let's work on the outputs. So now what we'll do, we'll show how the outputs from the control logic CPU get into the module and then out to the Profibus network. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. All right, so to verify that our outputs are getting to our Profibus network, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a watch list. This watch list will allow us to look a little easier. It will allow us to look at our outputs and our inputs at the same time. So I'm going to scroll over to View, and I have a predefined watch list. So I'm going to look at my output byte number four, and input byte number zero. Now with the help of PCB, I'm going to take a closer look at how the data for the outputs actually map up. So here's the PCB memory map. I'm going to click on outputs. So again in the start and end offset columns, the number represents the word and the letter L and H represent the byte. So for instance 2L represents word 2 low byte. So we see that our digital output 4 module starts on word 2 low byte and ends on word 2 low byte. So it only consumes a total of one byte. Okay, so to summarize, I'm going to open up a picture of our controller tags. And remember, our controller tags are in bytes. So at byte number 4 in our controller tags, that byte number 4 is mapped to word number 2 of our Profibus network. And word 2 is mapped to our digital output module. So let's take a look back at our controller tags. And I'm going to bring in the help of a video monitor. 
now I'm going to monitor the I.O. as we toggle some bits. So let's take a look at how the Phoenix Contact I.O. module is laid out. On the left here we have the Profibus DP bus terminal and just to the right of that we have the ILDI8 which is the inline 8 channel digital input module and then to the right of that we have that 2 channel analog input module and lastly the DO4, the 4 channel digital output module. And as we zoom in we'll notice that I have the digital outputs wired directly to the last two channels on the DI8, the 8 channel digital input module. So as I toggle some outputs it'll also turn on the digital inputs. Alright, so let's see a few values. So I'm going to enter a 1 in here and as I do you'll see the digital output and digital input both come on. Now I'll change the value and we'll see that the, actually I'll just toggle this bit for the second output and that digital output comes on and again it changes the value of the input as well. Now what I can do is I'll go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at this so you can actually see the LEDs a little bit better. Alright, so zoomed in, now I'll go ahead and toggle the first bit. So I'll toggle the bit and as I do you'll see that the output comes on. There you go, and the input also, and I'll toggle the second bit and you'll see that the output and input both come on. So that about does it for this training session. Until next time, happy training.